thank you for being here today, Becky. Um, your business is Integrated Equine Performance Body Work. And yep. that is, says a lot. Um, and you explain it in a very, very cool way. And you use the term French braid. And yep. so can you give me, like, just go through a little bit more, like, what are your modalities that you in integrate? Like, give yep. us more. So, um, well, foundationally, it's about performance and, um, and conversing with the horse about their body conversing with the horse to see you know which parts are performing and which are not and performance isn't necessarily for the only for the horse that's going into a performance i mean it could be a horse that is you know a you know a ridden horse or a cart horse or you know what whatever their um their job whether it's an avocation or a vocation for the right. for the owner and so um you know i kind of think of uh well, my husband's a car guy and um, we have a parade of cars through our marriage because he was buying and selling cars. And so if we think about a car, every car comes with a manual. And yeah. so I kind of, you know, I think about car analogies. And so I kind of have the idea that there's a um, there's a manual, a horse manual. Um, I do some stuff with the dogs also because people with horses have dogs. But um, and I have a dog. Uh, but generally my paid clients are, are horses. And so I think, I, I imagine that there's a design spec and functionality manual horse. And um, so things that are supposed to be aligned ought to be aligned and the way things are supposed to move, they should move that way. Um, the range of motion, if everything's working correctly, it ought to be aligned with the design specs in the manual. And so- right. Um, so what I do is I interact with the horse's body and have a conversation and the conversation goes something like, and how does this part work? And how does that part work? And I'm asking that same question. How does this part feel? How does it feel if I do this? How does it feel if I ask your body to do that? So essentially hundreds of times around the horse's body, I'm just asking the same question. How does it, how does it feel when I do this? And are, is your body off? How does it move relative to what it ought to do? And depending on the answers I get, then I consult my brain um, and the, the, um, the training that I have. And I always hope that we can make a little improvement because like, like straight up, we're all of us. It doesn't matter who we are, a human, a dog, a cat, a turtle, you know, the, the, what life happens. And nothing works the way the design spec manual says um, correct, <laughs> correct. <laughs> nothing on any of us ever works and so um and so i i um use the training that i have um yes you know i i've started developing some um some classes of myself for, 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 to, to share some of the things i know and um i've got four words at the bottom no more help more and I, I feel like I have a lot in my head. And so I have to sort of, you know, in the olden days, um, a Rolodex, a little flipping Rolodex, I would right. have to open and grab the one that I want. Um, I would say foundationally, most all of my horse, my, my body work sessions are Masterson method at their core, the way I work and the way I have a conversation and the way I ask different parts of the body to move. But it's, um, I, when, when I say French braid, I weave in, I weave in other modalities. I, I put my lights on my belt and I have my, um, what are they called? Half something, half, half wrap, half, half wrap, um, half wrap, yep. half wrap. Um, you know, I have that, I have sure foot pads. I have my beamer. I have, you know, back on track. I, I just, I have, I have the things in my head that I can do with my hands. And then I have certain contractions <laughs> that well you talk about cars right. so you're like the car mechanic where you have got you know there's a certain knowledge in your head that you know like if the transmission's going it's connected to this and you got to do this and yep. then 
you know, and then you have your tools and obviously your hands are also your tools as well, as well as your intention and your energy. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, um, you know, having a more informed mind so that I, it, you know, we could talk about, you know, com- conversing with the horse. Um, you know, I can have a conversation with a horse or anybody, and it can be sort of a general conversation. But if I had specific knowledge about specific parts and how those parts ought to work, then I can have a more focused conversation. And, and I could I could zero in on the sections that might be a little wonky. Um, I tend to think in pictures and I didn't, I think I'm funnier than I used to be, but I, 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 (laughs) it's funny to me. I I think about inside the horses or animals or people even that there's there, you know, what a winch is W I absolutely things getting tight. So I think about, you know, a section oftentimes it's muscle or whatever, and it's got two little dudes inside. Each of them have a winch and then there's extra floaty around guys. And any of the guys at the end could be too winchy. So one end or the other or both could be too tight or some idiot could walk by and step on the rubber band. You right. Know? So, so where, if, if I'm asking for a front leg to move down and back yeah. and the horse yanks its leg away or stomps it down or, you know, generally is like, yeah, it's hard for me. Um, then I'm like, okay, well, who are the idiots? That have the winches to fight. Which end is it? Which direction is it? Or you know, I mean, you know, you've got some techniques in your in your highest level um, training where you ask the front leg to go down and forward. Yeah. And you know, the horse that has to to elevate the opposite diagonal hind leg. Well, there's there's two possibly three little dudes on the inside. The guy on one end and the guy on the other end, and one or more people standing in the middle. You know. So, Correct. So. Correct. Um, I, depending on where I sense and I'm, my feel is better than it used to, than it was when I started. So I can now yeah. isolate which end the tension is at and I can feel right. it. And so then, so when I'm like, well, I, I think it's here, then what do I do about that? Is it, right. is it mobilization? Is it putting my hands on? Is it putting my lights on? Is it, um, is it using a, um, a grassing tool? Yeah. You know, there's, um, they're just, I know more so I can help more. Um, right. And, and I, I love that motto. That's amazing. And, yeah. I think, I think about uh, w- whether it's intuition or feel or knowledge, you know, I just, my brain has more in it. I mean, when I started this, we had to, um, we had to take an anatomy class. Uh, to be master's and certified. And um, I approached that course. It was an online course. And I approached it the way I approached anything that I would approach in college. Now, mind you, college had been a long time before that, but I had been an investment banker for like a really long time. Yeah. Had been my brain for really, you know, really well. But then I didn't do that. And I was a mom for yeah. like a long time. And so anyway, the first day I started, you know, doing my study and I had my flashcards and I had my, you know, writing my notes and, you know, I got a chunk of, of, uh, terms that I was going to memorize that day. And I came back the second day and it was empty. Like the cupboard was bare, nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, um, So, uh, it actually terrified me. And, you know, one of the reasons why I have that CD that you saw is I literally was terrified at, whether I had early onset dementia, like literally, I'm not, I'm not joking. Wow. And so what I, what became clear is it, it really took me about three years for the cogs to go and to be able to learn. And so um, now I keep using my brain because it is true, use it or lose it, whether we're talking about any, our body or the animal's body or our brains. And, um, and so I have, you know, certainly forgotten, I don't know, maybe even more than what I've already learned, but, right. but I keep Correct. putting her in and, you know, a person, you know, um, uh, she, she talks about, uh, they're sort of a finite surface area for knowledge that you can gain. Um, and she looks at it like, um, an iceberg 
and that there's only so much room for penguins on the iceberg. And if you learn new stuff and that's a little penguin jumping on, one's going to get knocked off. <laughs> interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> um, but, you know, so I, I just, I do think that there's value in, in learning more and then, yeah. and then, you know, trying to sort out how to use it. So that's what I do. You know, I, right. Um, I just, I come equipped and I come open to engage with yes. the course and see what their body and their behaviors have to say about what, well, you know, well, the parts and how do they work? Because ideally, you know, things ought to be aligned. You know, we ought, we ought not go through life um, like old mother Hubbard's house, you know, it, things ought to be lined up. Cause if, if anything's out of alignment, then there's going to be, um, dysfunction and there's going to be injury and there's right. that's going to result in inflammation and pain and you know ideally we could get back to the root of it we could straighten it all back out again um correct and, and along the way you know you your products are amazing at you know uh helping to right those ships or calm down the little dudes on winches but that but also um to reduce inflammation and reduce pain and and you know re reduce uh you know, infection and, you know, kill off little viruses. So right. um, all, all those fabulous things, right? All those things. Or just calm the world. Oh my gosh. Um, right. My, I, a uh, little promo for your, for your products. I, um, my daughter went to go visit uh, uh, my stepmom and her cat came to stay here and I looked at her cat. And I'm like, okay, we have a little issue, <laughs> little issue <laughs> you're here. And it was, uh, I didn't know what it was, but, um, and she was just a little out of sorts that her mom wasn't here. So, you know, I had my multi light and I'm like, okay, we're going to take the green and just stick it in the middle of your forehead. <laughs> Calm you down. <laughs> we're going to take the blue and we're going to poke it in your ear. And then I'm going to take the red and I'm going to get this little problem. And I'm going to tell you within four days, it was like, you know, the, the injury, you know, the little scab popped off and the, the thing that looked like, you know, black tar coming out of her ear was suddenly, and that wasn't happening there. And she was like, okay, I can come stay with you anytime. <laughs> oh, yay. I love that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. Like that multi-light is just like, it's still, we love, we still love hearing stories about that because it's still just, we, we just think it's absolutely so cool. It and is. It's, I, I couldn't it, imagine owning animals and not having a light. I mean, well, you know, it's, um, you feel helpless when yeah. you don't have knowledge and you can't help. And, right. um, and certainly I am, uh, sign me up for, uh, yeah. Western medicine. Um, except I now have an understanding that there's things that we can do um before that are inbounds for us to do with right. uh, our loved ones and um and we can sort out some of the maladies of life and living right. um and that there are alternatives to um, <clears throat> cutting and medicating in injecting yes yeah. and i love that and i love that talking about the structure and alignment and the balance and everything being in aligned and that it is a cascading effect and yeah. it doesn't matter if it's our horse if it's our dog if yeah. it's i don't know about cats so much having structural issues <laughs> um they're so flexible but yeah. in ourselves and so um you know that's one of the things that i have been doing tons and tons of work on developmentally on myself and it just makes so much sense. It's just like building a house, right? Like if the foundation isn't level, you know, there's going to be compensation somewhere higher up in the first floor, in the second floor, in the third floor. It's going to show up somewhere and eventually um, it's going to weaken and that's where the break is going to happen. And yeah. that's not any different than like in our horses, and so it's just so baffling to me. Um, there's a person that we currently know and um, has experienced some issue, structural like stuff going on with her horse. And um, like, 
not open to fixing the foundation, fixing, you know, fixing the building. And, um, and so I think the biggest message is, is just like you said, the more, you know, the more you're going to be able to help yeah. and the less frustrated you're going to be. Yeah. Um, you know, I can, uh, well, I feel a little frustration, perhaps on behalf of the horse and maybe yeah. with the human, but I can oh. empathize with the um, a person being at a point in their knowledge journey where the information that's coming at them is sort of like raindrops coming at the window pane that's right over there. Right. Like, it just ain't getting through. <laughs> yeah, it's not getting through. Right. Um, and, um, you know, so when I, uh, I, I think the best thing we can do is educate and inform and, yeah. offer and throw little seeds out and, yeah. um, and, and maybe ask questions, you know, I mean, the thing is, is, uh, well, <laughs> you use an analogy of a house. I tend to use an analogy of a tent mm-hmm. because, um, so I'm thinking about the kind of tent that has those little wire, like uh, uh, there's, there's um, el- elastic, you know, that elastic, right. the, Shock go, the, little, the little pipes and the yep. little pipe, the pipes are about two feet long and you can pull them apart. And then, and then you just have a stack of these, these pipes that have this elastic cord going through. And right. then you have, so you have, you know, uh, you got one, two, maybe three of those. Right. But if you have like a little front stoopy thing. So let's just let's just say there's two. Okay. There's one going this way and one going this way. And yep. the little loops are either out of the tent or in the tent. Doesn't really matter. You send your you send, you put this thing together. Now you have this this thing that's like 12 feet long. You got this big dagger that's 12 feet long, and you send right. it up through the little loops. And now it has popped up the tent. Right. right. Now the tent is up and it's probably straight. But what do you have to do in order to make sure that your tent doesn't go tumble bumble down the road when the wind comes? Right. You have to put tie downs on it. Yeah. And if your tie downs are not square. Yes. Around the four corners of your tent. And if the tension on the tie down is different at any one of the four corners, then your tent is going to be wonky. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got you've got um, out of equilibrium tension wires, and so that's actually what I see when a, a horse. And sometimes, um, you know, like I don't know, are you familiar with surefoot pads? I we have some. Okay, so you can. I mean, if a horse will stand on them, correct. You, you, you can just put their front feet on them, and you and I, as experienced at doing the work that we do, could look at a horse and go, "Well, that tent is crooked." Correct. Correct. <laughs> yes. We can look at it and go, "That horse is standing harder on the right front than it is on the left front. That yeah. horse is pitched diagonally forward onto the left front and off of the right hind." We right. can look at that and go. You know, and they would say, well, how do you know that? You know, you don't even have to have that conversation. You just yeah. put your little feet on the sure foot pads and then go, oh, what, is that? What, what do you notice? Right. What, why is that one more squished in? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the imbalance shows up right in those pads. It's, it's exactly. incredible. So, yeah. so sometimes, you know, I mean, some people, sometimes people just, they don't want to hear, but that's the same kind of person that would go to the doctor and the doctor will go, well, the path you're on is going to lead you to, I don't know, cancer, you know, whatever, you know, you're going to get cancer. And they're like, well, no, my, you know, my, my mom smoked until she was 98, you know? So (laughs) there are are some people who, um, they just don't want to hear bad news. They don't, they don't want to, or maybe the solution is hard for them. You know, I mean, the fact of the matter is that when a horse's body has an issue, a big percentage of the time, probably more than 90%, it's either teeth, toes, tack, rider, other human issues. Correct. Now, there's other things to consider, but right. um, you know the the 
the response to the, you know, the other thing I always say is the issues in the tissue. Like ah, it doesn't matter what the issue is. It doesn't matter if it's behavior or performance right. or, you know, it, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the output is that you're seeing, the issues in the tissue. So the question is which tissue and where, and, and, um, is it diagnosable? And so, okay, fine. Bring in the people that can diagnose it, or is it accessible? Um, right. You know, the the main care team, the veterinarian, the farrier, the dentist, dental worker, whatever. Um, you know, those people who have you know the kind of credentials. Of course, they're the frontline people to to try yeah. to determine um, whether there's an internal organ issue or a system issue or you know body, but you know blah blah blah. Um, right. But um, you know, it begins with uh, being um interested and willing to see yeah <laughs> that the tent is crooked yeah. that the tent is crooked exactly tent is crooked. exactly and, and if the tent is crooked um you know what what's going on sometimes you know i i have an intake process that is really detailed and sometimes simply the answers the filling out the the if I ask the question, you right. know, um, relating to activities and behavior in the groom stall, um, you know, if I said, do, do, do you have any trouble, you know, getting your horse ready to go ride? No. But if I said, you know, uh, does the horse show any negative behaviors um, when, when you walk toward the groom star, stall? Is there anything that happens, you know, with brushing or different kinds of brushes? Um, is, are there any... Uh, does the horse exhibit any opinions um, when you bring any piece of tack at them? You know, if I get more grainy, if right. I say, you know, um, uh, how's it going? You're riding. Okay. Um, okay. Well, uh, do you mount from the ground or do you use a block? Um, does the horse stand still until you um, sit on in the saddle and put your feet in the stirrups or, or are there any other activities around riding oh god the horse walks off and I have to have somebody hold him and I'm like oh good okay you know so right I, right when I get more grainy with my questions then that actually provides information to to them to right. to make people ask so you know I um I love that. knowing that I began and for years was like you know, whenever I was going to get training in some new modality, I was like, gosh, that's just, I don't think that could work. You know, I, I have <laughs> been on a knowledge journey myself and I am way more open. I can, yeah. can hear more. Um, yeah. I can hear more because I know more and I've been exposed to things that um, my initial reaction was, oh my God, that's just like, who could <laughs> Right, right. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really hard, especially when, when we're, I mean, hopefully everybody's empathetic, but um, the degree of empathy and some people experience like you've shared in the past that, that you feel what the horses are feeling. So um, it's really hard when we see what we believe is, um, okay, a, a lack of response. I was gonna say a lack of care a lack of response to to some factual apparently factual condition of a horse that you know correct there's a opportunity to make improvement to reduce correct. to reduce pain reduce information inflammation increase uh well-being and increased performance so yeah. when you have that information and you're like just listen to me <laughs> 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 it's really it's really hard um yeah and it's 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 hard um to not have people um be ready to hear um yeah. and you know most of the time I'm okay with it yeah there were a couple situations where I fired clients because it was like yeah. okay I, I can't like I, you're yeah. not doing anything and I can't do anything about the fact that you're not doing anything and I can't I can't look at you yeah, we can't we can't make everybody hear our message. No, because you know they're not for whatever reason they're not ready. Um, yeah, they're not. Yeah, exactly. And there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and just as long as they continue on the path and keep searching, they'll get there eventually, or we hope so, right? 
Well, yeah, I mean, the hard news is that either for our own bodies or the bodies of of beings we love, you know, if there's an issue and it's not addressed, it yeah. will escalate and right. it will get worse. And so, um, you know, we hope. Yeah. I don't wish that on anybody, but no. I have stopped treating horses before because it's like, well, I'm just making, I'm just delaying the problem. I'm delaying your breaking, to be honest. Right. And, and I'm making, you have to work longer and harder right. by helping you now. So mm, I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah, my schedule's really booked. I'm sorry, I can't. Yeah. Just because, you know, the, 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 the inability to, um, to do whatever the job was and have to get treated by that other, you know, professional. Was right. Like, okay, well, that's the answer. You know, yeah, all your bed. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Absolutely. I know he's not lame right now, but it will be soon. So Correct. I'm not going to have it not be lame today. Correct. I love that. You know, it's a it's a message that I think um, we've all encountered that, like, you know, as business owners and as professionals, um, it's good for our our audience to be able to to hear that, to go, it's OK to fire a client. Yeah. There's, there is not, like, we know, and, and I think it's because I think we attract in so many, we do attract in so many empathetic people and right. their, their heart, like their place is to help the animal. And that's where they are first and foremost, whether it's a dog or a cat or a horse or an elephant or whatever. Um, and sometimes, and so I'm glad you brought that up to say, you know, sometimes you're just delaying the inevitable and in in return the animal is maybe not actually benefiting um yeah, and yeah you know and it is okay to say i i i don't feel that i'm the best fit at this time there is nothing wrong with it it takes a lot of inner strength to be able to recognize that situation and to be able to very elegantly back away from it yeah well you know that that comes down to um, you know, the team and yeah. the owner should be part of the team. Correct. And if the owner is not playing on the team, <laughs> then, you know, uh, yep. and furthermore, they're unwilling to listen or hear or make adjustments or right. see, consider that what you're observing might actually be what's really happening you know I mean I could be wrong I, 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 yeah. I, I'm wrong and I'm, I'm I'm willing to be told I'm wrong um yeah but um if I see a some sort of a dysfunction and um and the again this really doesn't happen for me but I know it happens with other people and it happens it can happen when you when you're first starting out you know, in, in trying to be a helper using, you know, your right. hands, your knowledge or, you know, implements like lights and stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's challenging when the, um, the care provider or owner of the animal that you're trying to treat, um, isn't, isn't on the team. Um, yeah. most of the time, you know, I mean, we we live in woo land for a fairly proud I don't know what percentage of the population you know anybody right. kind of body work I mean when I first heard about body work I'm like we mm -hmm. talk and the, and the guy's like right. you know, massage therapy I'm like for a horse <laughs> I mean <laughs> back to the part about I grew up on a farm with 110 horses and my dad was a farrier and I, and I'll and when I heard about the equine massage I'm like what are you talking about he's like you know hands touching massage just like right for horses I'm like I never heard of it. Um, so, right. so, you know, when you get further down the path of like, Ooh, in blue light, you know, yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you. So, um, my, uh, husband and I, um, have two beautiful daughters and, um, our daughters came to us through adoption and, um, the country that, uh, we were in, which shall go unnamed because they're perpetrating horrors right now. Um, when I, I went and volunteered in the orphanage and, um, there was a portion of the day where all of the humans were to leave because they turned on this light over the door that was blue. 
Okay. So I got home with my girls. Uh, well, for, that was 99, 98. And so I was there the summer of 1998. So the summer of 1998, in my head, I'm like, y'all are cray cray. Now I get it because it's antibacterial. <laughs> but at the time, all I thought was they were a bunch of idiots who were just turning on a blue light. Now, right. we could discuss the effectiveness of a light that's over the top of a door and the size of the room and right. whether it was actually effective. But it wasn't for me like, oh, you idiots, it's too far away. That was not the point. Right. <laughs> In my head, it was like, what, 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 right. what, this blue light. And so, um, you know, look how far I've come. <laughs> I know you've done a great job. I'm using, I'm using a light, you know, a green light, a red light. A blue light. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I love the fact I'm going to backtrack a little bit because you brought up a really great point on um, asking the questions and yeah. asking the grainy questions, the very minute questions. And, um, you know, I think we sometimes get afraid to ask questions specific questions because we don't want to feel like we're imposing or intruding or something like that. But it's one of those things that's so drastically important to find out. Absolutely. And I have gotten, you know, I, I, I just have learned so much in so many realms uh, in this journey that I've been on. And one of them is to just be comfortable asking questions. And yeah, but, but what I have a particular form, and so yeah. it's on the form that it's not me asking. Right. It's just exactly. The form. I, I got I gotta fill out the form. And yeah. so I have these grainy questions on the form. I even right. talk about the rider, you know, and, and who, you know, the riders, right. their experience level. Do any of them have any, you know, are there any, you know, things that are baggage that they're bringing with them right now in terms of emotional things that they're dealing with? Um, do they have body compensations or injuries, you know, bust bum right. knee or, you know, walking down like Quasimodo, you know, is there, right. right. Exactly. About it. But here's the deal straight up. Yeah. If I haven't asked that question. I can get to the horse. I'm like, God, okay. Yeah. This person has a problem with that right hip because the horse is mirroring that. So, right. um, so I'm, uh, I let the form you know, do the asking, do, do the and, asking. And then it's not me like getting in their knickers about whether they busted their knee. It's just like, you know, for the, you right. hired me to come work with your horse and you probably, of course, you know this, but horses mirror what's happening in, in body. So I'm just going to ask about the riders, you know, how many riders are there? Is there anybody who has sure. some body yeah. challenges? Cause that yeah. will need to understand if I see something in the horse you yeah. know, the human body is what it is. Um, yeah. There was once I um, I went to um, Europe and I had this um, veterinarian colleague of mine. She came here and her boyfriend, soon to be husband, came um, and he was a fairy. So they came here and spent a week with my clients where I was like, I can't figure it out. And then I spent a week with her, with her clients. And um, there was one client that she said, I just cannot figure this horse out. And I'm like, okay. And it was a very high end horse. And um, the horse had, uh, she had been her client for a really long time. And they had sold the horse to someone else. And like, within a week, the horse was crippled. And so <laughs> she, she, she's, and she had looked and sort and, you know, they had vet, all this stuff. And um, so she's like, can you just see what you think? And I'm like, okay, sure. So I looked at the saddle. I looked at the feet. I looked at the teeth. I talked, you know, did anybody, ch what changed? You know, vet change, farrier change, dentist change, you know, feed change, location change, sa saddle change. Nope, same saddle. Everything's everything's the same. And I'm like, right. okay, what about the person? Um, what What's going on with the person? And um, And she was there. And so... <laughs> and it was uh, someone who was well known to all of them. So it was okay for me to do what I just did, uh, what I was about, what I'm about to say. Um, I said, so, you know, tell me about you. Is there anything that, you know, you're struggling with right now or anything going on? And she's like, oh yeah, you know, I, I don't remember what her issue was, but um, she had a really bad body issue and compensation and I could see it, you know, she was, it was, you know, are your shoulders level? No, I don't even have to ask you. <laughs> So, um, right. You could physically see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I'm like, well, it's you. 
And and the thing that you're struggling with, the horse is mirroring you, right? That's what's happening. The horse is mirroring you. And, you know, you have just said that this thing that you're dealing with, you're dealing with it and you're under care and you're doing physical therapy. um, But it's straight up showing up in the horse's body. And so, you know, being able to um, have enough experience and knowledge, I guess, to right. know this really happens. It's not just like woo-woo crazy stuff. Yeah. It really is. It really does happen. Correct. Um, and then, you know, having this process that that enables you to have the conversation. Now, you know, I'll tell you, I don't, I mean, most of the time I follow all the steps, but every once in a while, you know, you're like, hey, you just show up, you do your thing. And um there's this one client right up the road that, um, y- you know, I go there a lot and she has me do a lot. And usually I say, did anything happen? And I did this one time. Is there anything I need to know about? Nope, everything's good. Yeah. So this horse who I've been my client for years, I went in the stall and I'm like, oh my God. And about 30 minutes later, I walked out and I'm like, are you sure nothing happened with that horse? Because I'm seeing this and this. Look at the sheep. Look at these. I got this, 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 and this is what's happening. She's like, oh, I forgot to tell you. He had a rotational fall. How the hell do you forget to tell somebody that the horse had a rotational fall? <laughs> at the show and launched the daughter too. Okay. So uh, this horse actually had a fractured skull. Oh my God. This divot in his head wasn't here three weeks ago. Oh my like, gosh. What different? I'm like, wow. come put your finger here. So was wow. she trying to hide it from me? I said, that's the thing. I think people, yeah. people don't, um, they don't remember, they get busy, but they're also, um, are you familiar with Dr. Sue Dyson? I am not. She's a renowned veterinarian um, in uh, Great Britain. And she has done, a number of studies and one of them was a very detailed study on um whether or not people could see the pain indications in a horse so she okay. did a test that identified specific um pain markers the horse face has actually got more ability to express with its parts than the human face does Wow. Yeah. And I so believe, I believe it. I mean, I always like, you know, everybody goes, well, what are you doing? I'm like, I always watch the horse's face whenever I'm doing an assessment yeah. evaluation. I am focused on his face and I, you know, I get more information from the face than I do from anything else. Yeah. Well, so she's got this, um, it's the pain expressions in the ridden horse. So, so it's this whole, some of its face, some of its nice. Tail. Um, so anyway, she came up with this test and specifically identified each of those things. And then the question was, um, did people see it? Ah. Um, and could like any could anybody, literally anybody, be taught to know what to look for and then look for it and see it? And right. so the results of the study are that the vast majority of people do not identify the pain communication. Um, And they don't, they actually don't see it. Um, And the complicating factor is that when they do see it, they attribute it to behavior as opposed to an uh, articulation of pain. So, you know, a grimace or, you know, inviting call them finger teeth, you know, sending the finger teeth at me um, right. is a, well, they're being naughty or they're being mean or right. they're being a jerk or they're being whatever. Or, or and, they're ticklish. Like, like that, that's always yeah. my favorite one. Like we'll do an assessment and, um, or we'll ask questions and go, and the, oh, do you have any problems saddling up girthing? Oh, my horse is just really ticklish. Really? Have you ever seen a horse laugh? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, get, I get back to the the question there because people m- mischaracterize. They either don't see, yeah, or they mischaracterize as behavior. And if it's behavior, then it's a choice that the horse is making, and it has, and then it is disconnected, unrelated to right. anything that could be 
not working well for the horse. And so if I just generally say, is there anything, you know, is there anything in the groom stall? There might be a person who would say no, because they mischaracterize the habitual behavior as simply behavior, as opposed right. to, will you just listen? I'm hurting, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah. that um, that inability, lack of knowledge, I guess I'll say that right. people have about the um, the expressions that a horse makes, and that those are actually articulations of if there could be a little cartoon bubble over their head, it would be that hurts. I hurt. I don't. I hurt. Um, and so people don't understand what those. They don't. They don't see the thought bubble. They don't know there's words in there that say this isn't good for me. Um, yeah. They miss that and and they mischaracterize it. That say straight up, don't even see it or, or right. they mischaracterize it. And so um, that's you know for our listening people that that's another benefit to. Um, yeah. It's a way for you to simply articulate what you know. And so if they have a form, whether they fill it out before you get there or you right. just chat through it with them, and you know does the horse ever do any you know does ever do anything with his teeth or you know does he grimace or ears back or you know. What do you, what do you, and what do you make of that? Yeah. You know, okay, good, good to know. Yeah. You know, you just gather all the data. And so you have yeah. a bunch of puzzle pieces. Um, and then, you know, I mean, the number of times where I have been able to, I've gotten enough of the puzzle pieces that I'm able to put the puzzle pieces together using critical reasoning and past history. And I put the puzzle pieces together and I now, well, 13 years later, I don't blurt out the answer. Right. But I already know. I just point out the puzzle pieces and then I'll go, right. what do you, do you make anything of that? What do you, what do you think? Yeah. Because when you start linking them together, you know, it's, it's actually, it's confusing. It's confusing to people to have yeah. all of that. You know, I mean, I, for, for Masterson, I read case studies and, um, you know, that when students are new in the process, they're like, I don't got any idea. <laughs> right. You know, the, what, what the possible primary issues might be. And I'm like, okay, well, it's this and this and this and this and this, you know, da, 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 you know, right. <laughs> and, right. And the triage order is this one first. Um, I mean, I've had a number of conversations where actually I just got an email from a veterinarian in Iowa asking, you know, she read my bio and asking if I ever have triplerins because she has this horse and, you know, I'm like, let's just plan a conversation. Um, a number of times I will, I just use my intake interview form and I'm able to go, well, we could do that, but before you need, do, what do you think about getting this and this sorted out and that, you know? Right. Um, and, I love that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So people ask questions. Listen to the horse, watch the horse, pay attention to the horse, and then ask more questions. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. I love yeah. that. And this, and so thank you, Becky, for being on. And um, her contact information is in the links. And um, feel free to email her. Um, she's obviously like a walking encyclopedia for anything equine body work um, and other things. She's absolutely amazing. And so I'm so grateful that you were able to spend some time with me today and share some just few nuggets of your wisdom with our community. We're so grateful for you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you inviting me. And um, I always love spending time with you, even when it's yeah. hard. We've gotten a lot better at this after that nasty little disease we all had to deal with but um you know right. i really appreciate you and brian and your products i use them all the time and um, but i uh i just uh heartfelt to you guys you you guys have impacted my knowledge and my journey in yeah. a way that is beyond my ability to articulate i really oh. appreciate you thank you thank you thank you we're so blessed to have you in our community Yay. Aw, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> okay. It's okay to show emotion, you know? I know. I know. I know. Yay. That was so much fun. Was, it did was you have fun? fun. It Yay. was fun.
So I appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me. Obviously, I have nothing to say. So it's always, you know, a little like nothing. Right. So when my my team goes, hey, Donna, we need to talk about we need some more health made simples. I'll say, just call Becky. We'll sign her up because we can talk about a gajillion worth. We could do this every week. <laughs> Perhaps we could. Perhaps we could. Perhaps we could. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much, honey. It was great. Thank you. you. Yes. Got a lot of changes you hope are coming up. So I wish you all the best with a speedy, a speedy opportunity with those and the perfect and best outcome. Thank you. I You're sure welcome. appreciate it. All yeah. right. We'll see you soon. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.